Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So I am in my backyard today and I wanted to talk to you about a story that recently came out in the National Enquirer regarding me and Nelson Ellis, who was the actor on the TV show True Blood, who was my twin when we were both on the Scientology Purification Program together. But before I get into that story, I did want to let you guys know that I launched a Patreon page for my channel. And if you're not familiar with what Patreon is, it allows you as my viewer to be able to leave a monthly contribution to me and my channel so I can be able to grow my channel, so I can put more money into my production costs, as well as being able to um, publish my upcoming book. It's called My Scientology Memoir, as well as I have an upcoming documentary that I'm doing that I'm about to announce really soon for you guys. So if you want more information, the link is right here. It's all, and it's also going to be down in the description box below. So I did hint off to you guys a couple years ago that I did the purification program and was the twin of a very famous celebrity. I don't know if I would go as to a very famous celebrity, but he was a very well-known actor who was on the TV show True Blood. At the time when I made my documentary, I didn't necessarily want to name who the celebrity was just because I felt like it was private and it wasn't something I really thought was crucial to the overall picture of my story. I really wanted to talk about you know, the Celebrity Center and what I encountered and endured while I was there and I didn't feel like I wanted it to be necessarily like a Scientology celebrity gossip sort of video or something like that. But I did make a video around November, so last year, where I did reveal his name. I did contact him online and ask him if he wanted to appear on my channel or if he wanted to actually make a comment either way regarding this and I didn't hear back from him. And the reason I decided to reveal his affiliation was because of the double standard. I wouldn't necessarily have done it if it was another celebrity. I don't really know who to say as an example, but if it was another celebrity, I probably wouldn't have said who it was just because, again, like I said, it's private. But in this case, El Son played a flamboyantly gay character on the show True Blood. He played a character called Lafayette. And it was a very gay character. Now, Okay, what's the big deal about that? Well, Nelson is affiliating himself to the Church of Scientology, and I guess, because he has since passed, I want to be respectful, I don't want to say anything to, um, you know, obviously he's since passed on, I don't want to, you know, say anything too bad, but when you're, let's put it this way, if you're affiliating to, how do I put it? If you're affiliating to anti-homosexual or anti-gay, comments or being part of an organization that doesn't support gay rights then to me you're going on stage and accepting an award for your gay character but on the flip side you are on the opposite side of the fence let's say it like that so i felt like it was only my place then to make a comment about it and i made a video so this is where this comes in the national Enquirer. So this was the July 31st edition. If, if you do want to see the article, I will link it down below. They're also on my social media channels if you guys have any interest in actually reading the story that was in the National Enquirer. But the National Enquirer did see my video that I did regarding Nelson Ellis and how he was my twin on the Scientology Purification Program. So in case you guys didn't already see it, I wanted to share with you the article today and kind of give my input and my thoughts on the article that they did write. I've been meaning to make this video for a little while, guys. I'm sorry. I've been a little bit backed up with videos. But um, here is the article that the National Enquirer did. So the title is Tragic True Blood Stars Secret Scientology Treatment. It goes on to say, Alcoholic Nelson Ellis was in Dangerous Detox Program. So I just want to make a little bit of comment before I kind of get into the article. I was his twin on the purification program. Now, what's a twin if you're not familiar? Basically, a twin is a person that you go through the program with. So, in my case, Nelson was my twin to make sure that, you know, we were taking our vitamins. You had to make sure you were overlooking the other person. If they start, like, throwing up or something like that, you have to be able to get, you know, the purification program in charge involved and that sort of thing. So, you know, of course, like, you're running on the treadmill. If someone starts hallucinating or something really crazy happens, you need to be able to look out for your partner on the program. So that was kind of what my responsibility was. We had to fill out daily check sheets, so we were kind of like going on the checklist of the check sheet together to make sure we complete all the steps for the day. We'd go into the sauna for four and a half hours and sweat out drugs and toxins. And how I initially met Nelson, which I think it does mention in the article. Let's see here. 
the way I actually met Nelson on the program before we became twins, because I was already on the program for a while, and not like a super long time, maybe like two weeks or three weeks or something like that before Nelson actually joined the program. Now, at this point, I was on the program like in the evening, night times, because I was working during the day or had other stuff going on, auditions and stuff. So I would normally start the program anywhere from noon to probably the latest, like probably like to start it, would be like maybe six or 7 p.m. in the evening. And Nelson, which I later learned, would be working on set and he'd be basically coming in they'd accommodate him around the clock. So if he came in at midnight, they'd have the Purify C stay at midnight and they would then go on to deliver the program to him over the next five hours. So it didn't matter, this is a celebrity, this is someone they cater to, someone they find it's important. Because remember, celebrities are VIPs. And not just because they're VIPs, because they're on a movie or a TV show, that Scientology believes that they can then therefore use their celebrity to disseminate Scientology to the rest of the public and the world and be like Tom Cruise. They say Tom Cruise introduced Scientology to like a billion people of the world and they want those type of influencers, almost like a social media influencer. I'm a YouTube influencer maybe to some degree where I'm able to have a platform and tell my story and to influence other people on, you know, what I believe or that sort of thing. You guys are not an influencer so I don't have to really explain it, but they kind of want influencers. And I want to make a video for you guys soon about how I was in charge of working on recruiting some up-and-coming celebrities for the Church of Scientology and some people that turn out to be very big names in the industry now so I haven't really talked about that too much on my channel so I have that coming for you guys soon but this is the thing I met Nelson and my friend Buffy and I'll say her name I don't care <laughs> Buffy um, was an actress, but she wasn't a good actress. Let's be honest, Buffy was an aspiring actress, but you knew Buffy wasn't gonna ever make it in the industry. I'm sorry, that sounds so mean, but Buffy really was not a good actress. Hey, we came here to forget, didn't we? It can't be done. Why not? How could you, Joey? I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. How many times do I have to tell you? It's not good enough. Look, we needed the money, so I got the promotion. You got a lot more than that. And the Oscar goes to... She was like a middle-aged woman who came from Clearwater, Florida, and she was at the Celebrity Center, and she was doing this program, but she was already like clear or somewhere at least halfway up the bridge. But they, again, were making people go back down the bridge to do... Um, the purification program once they redesign it or they determine that they're not actually clear or whatever they make people redo services right so Buffy was my twin in the beginning part of the program and she came up to me and she looked like a ghost because Buffy was so excited because she loved Nelson Ellis and she loved True Blood and she loved his show so um, I'm like well did you talk to him or whatever and she's like oh look I'm you know like I'm too starstruck sort of thing. And I was like, I don't care like who it is. Like, I'll talk to him, I don't care. So he was sitting in like the little like waiting lobby area of the purification program, like in the basement of Celebrity Center, like right next to the sun, I guess. I don't really know how to put it, like the cooling off area, I guess is the best way to put it. So this is what I told the Inquirer. I was sitting in the sauna and Nelson was in the corner reading a script. You take five to ten minute breaks where you step out of the sauna into a sitting area. My friend came up to me excitedly to tell me that the new guy was Lafayette from the HBO show True Blood. He was down to earth mango added. Nelson later became my twin in Scientology. A twin is your partner you do the program with. You oversee the, you oversee the other person while you are on the program and you sit with them in the sauna, fill out worksheets together. He said Nelson had remained silent about Scientology out of fear of the group's anti-gay positions would sour his career, which was also the other part of the flip side. Like, you can't have best of both worlds. So, in my mind, you know, if you're afraid other people are going to find out you're in Scientology because they're anti-gay and that's going to hurt your image or your role on this TV show, I'm going to call you out. That's why I don't really feel bad about exposing him, even though he's since passed on. Rest in peace. He was a nice guy. He did nothing ever to me to elicit me being like, you know, angry or something but this is just the facts of what actually happened a couple of years ago on the purification rundown so again it mentions how katie holmes's hands were purple on the program again it's a very dangerous program if you weren't familiar with my story about what actually happened to me on the program you can go down to my channel i did a video about the purification rundown and my poodle penelope's in the video with me 
and I discuss about how I passed out on the program, I went unconscious, and then they instructed me to go back in the sauna even though I was experiencing heat stroke. So if you guys want to hear that story about what actually happened, how I almost died, that is down in my channel. Click down below and subscribe to my channel too if you're not already subscribed so you guys can get updates when I make new videos like this. So his manager, Emily, attributed the death to the actor's solo attempt to quit drinking. So this is the thing. Say, say Nelson was an alcoholic. When you're on this program, you're taking up to 5,000 milligrams a day of niacin. That's a very toxic dose. You can take maybe safely, like maybe five milligrams, 10 milligrams, 50, maybe even up to 100 if you're really, if you're feeling adventurous, I guess, or if you really need to be taking a very high dose of niacin for whatever reason. But 5,000 milligrams, it causes liver toxicity. It causes failure of different organs in your body. It's definitely not something you want to mess with, especially if you were consuming alcohol or were a very heavy drinker and then you're poisoning your body with nice and on top of that. I'm not saying that I 100% know in some way that the purification program, you know, was contributed to his death because again, we did it a couple of years ago and he only recently died as of a couple of weeks ago. So I don't necessarily want to, you know, come on camera and claim like I know for sure that this is the case. But I know when I was on the program with him and when I was his partner on the program that you know, when you're taking very high doses of vitamins and you're taking high doses of dangerous vitamins like, you know, niacin, as well as going in the sauna for so many hours a day, it's just very, very rough on your body. And it also goes to show you, guys, you hear all these sounds. This is why I cannot film outside for the life of me. I try so hard to do videos out here because it's pretty, but there's always some sort of noise and I live up in the hills. It's supposed to be quiet, but there's always some sort of noise. Um, so yeah, that's the thing. His body, you know, is already probably damaged to some degree if you were a heavy drinker or using drugs. And then you go on this program to try to help yourself thinking like, oh yeah, they make it like, it's just like this very nice cleanse to get rid of like the drugs and toxins from your body. And it's all natural, it's holistic, but really it's doing more harm to the body than is any good. So, so I can't come on camera and tell you guys that I know for sure this contributed to his death. I think it had to contribute to some degree, but it really is something that I think that others, when I decided whether or not to tell the story in further detail to the press, I decided I wanted to tell the story because I feel like it may help others who, you know, there's not a lot of information necessarily, like maybe on the purification rundown or other things. Like, yeah, there are some different things, but I really want to make others aware of the dangers, especially when it involves celebrities and other people, because people look up to these type of people it's like hey it happened to them it could happen to you you know it happened to the best of them and if someone was doing drugs or they were considering doing you know Narconon or any of these programs that are based on this program it's not gonna be good for your body I probably have experienced different issues after I did this program because I did it twice guys for several several months over the course of my life I guess we can say um, several months of my life were on this program day in and day out and I didn't necessarily feel like it changed my life. And it also shows you that it doesn't work. Scientology is a definite thing. If you apply it correctly and you follow the procedures, then it's gonna work. That's what Scientology claims. And it's a very definite certain thing. Like this is where you say like, you no longer have the residual effects of drugs and toxins in your body. You're not in effect over them anymore. You're no longer gonna have any cravings. You're basically healed from addiction because addiction doesn't exist in Scientology's mind. It exists in a way of it being not, well, it's not necessarily like how they think in like AA or any of these sort of groups where addiction is something you live with for your whole life or it's a disease. They just think like, oh, it's like an aberration. It's just something that once you handle like the mental effects as well as the physical effects of these drugs on your body, it's not gonna, you know, have an effect over you anymore and it's not gonna control your life. But in this case, like, I know many people as well who've relapsed and done other things after doing this program, but you know, I don't know how they can claim it's effective. And especially with Narconon, they claim that they have this like astronomical, like maybe like 80% success rate, no one ever relapses, maybe 10% of people or something. But again, those people are probably just SPs anyways. And that's what Scientology believes. And it's very dangerous. And it's not medically supervised. There's no one on that program that's like a nurse. You have someone who is trained that took a book and lecture course essentially on how to operate the sauna and dispense the vitamins and they're not medical professionals. I passed out in the sauna. I had a very horrific experience and I was put back in the sauna. They didn't take my vitals. They didn't go and make sure that I was okay in any way from like a medical standpoint to call an ambulance for me or to make sure I had proper fluids. They just said put them back in the sauna. They're 
you know, ruining people's lives. And I knew Nelson personally. I've heard different stories and different things from him. And I don't necessarily want to go into all the details because I don't think every single detail about his past history with alcohol or other things is really prevalent or necessary for this video, maybe in my book. You know, I want to respect his privacy to some degree, even though he's passed on. But, you know, maybe I'll tell it in my book. I don't really know yet. But, you guys, it's not something to joke about. Like, people tell me all the time, maybe I can go in and do a course or I can do the purification program if I want to get clean or something like that. And it's like, no. It's, there's so many other things you can do to help yourself and your body. You don't want to be under any sort of mind control, any form of torture by being placed back in the sauna in that deadly heat and frying your brain with all those vitamins. Like people would comment on my video and be like, hey, I must have been trying to torture him, like trying to fry his brain with the vitamins in the sauna and all that sort of stuff. And it's kind of true when you think about it. They were trying to um, inflict me to be under their control more or less by keeping me there day in and day out, studying Scientology while I was in the sauna, and it was all part of wearing me down to become a full-fledged Scientologist, because this is an early step you do in Scientology. And Nelson, for example, instead of going in the celebrity sauna, he went in the public sauna, so, you know, he had every right to remain private if he wanted to, to do the program with other celebrities, if there really was any there. There wasn't a lot of Scientology celebrities when I was in Scientology, guys. There was a couple people, Kirstie Alley, John Travolta, people who you you know, are washed up, long gone, don't make any films anymore, and just, they don't have any of the new young blood, I guess. They don't have anyone in their 20s or 30s that are, like, young people that got in. Not second generation. I'm not talking about, like, an Erica Christensen or those Laura Prepon. I'm talking about someone that was, like, myself, who was, like, say, 20 years old and got into Scientology, just as an actor, for example. You don't see other celebrities joining because it ruins your career. And just like it says in this article, just like how it spoke to the Inquirer about they, um, they hide their affiliation because they don't want to ruin their career. Nelson didn't want to be known as a homophobic because he played a gay character and it's okay to play a gay character in Scientology if you're turning over the check to Scientology. But Scientology wouldn't let me as an actor play a gay character, for example. I couldn't play a psychiatrist. I couldn't play someone who was drug addicted. I couldn't play something that's considered low-toned. I could only play something that's very theta. I don't want to take on the beingness and assume the identity of a toxic personality, if we can put it that way. So there's a lot of different things that I know I've been speaking about Scientology for many years now, but there's many things that I still have only brushed the surface on, guys. If you have any means whatsoever to be able to help me with my Patreon, my link is over here. I have some really great giveaways and prizes for you guys if you're able to contribute to my channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I'm almost at 7,000. I believe or I might have hit 7,000. I'm trying to get to 10,000 and then to 20,000 followers because I want to be the biggest Scientology YouTube channel. If you do see Scientology ads on my videos, click on them as well as other ex-members. Click on all those ads, watch them through because Scientology pays to advertise on our videos and then we get paid from the revenue that Scientology pays to advertise on videos such as mine or other ex-members. So it's a way for us to be able to get our money back and to take money out of Scientology and therefore being able to put it in pockets of other creators such as myself or, you know, all the other ex-Scientologists that do videos such as this. And then we put it back into exposing Scientology. So if you want to help me be able to use Scientology's money to then turn around and expose them, then definitely watch and click on all the ads. Just a little tips, a little fun fact. If you don't want to do it on mine, do it on your other favorite um, channel. It will help to use Scientology's ad money against them, so to speak. So again, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Comment. I read all my comments. And um, stay tuned. And more videos coming for you guys. Thanks so much for watching.